No, we call it Starlark 13. That's what it's like. Some of the people who've moved out say it's like getting out of prison. It was like living in a grubby fairy tale, and I still am. It's a financial trap. It's a financial sinkhole. Once you're in, it's very hard to get out. If there's any way that can more quickly separate a person in a retirement village from their money, I don't know it. Hello and welcome to Four Corners. They're known as Australia's silver tsunami, the more than three million people over the age of 65. Almost 200,000 Australians currently live in retirement villages. And as the great wave of the fast ageing population crests, the big business of housing them will grow and grow. In glossy advertisements, retirement villages are invariably presented as a kind of nirvana for safe and secure independent living. But the reality can be very different. Retirees can find themselves snared in complex commercial arrangements with crippling fees and oppressive rules. Wealth accumulated over a lifetime of saving can quickly evaporate, leaving unsuspecting inhabitants financially bereft. Tonight, in this joint investigation with Fairfax Media, Four Corners puts the spotlight on the country's biggest listed operator, Aveo, which is accused of exploiting some of its most vulnerable clients. Adele Ferguson reports. Don't give me rules, I won't obey, cause I won't hear them. Don't take my choices away, cause I need them. Don't tell me how to live my life for any reason. Just give Retirement should be fun, fun, fun. Don't say that we can stay cause we're together. Don't make us live apart cause we're forever. Or so an ad from this retirement village company would have us believe. So are we having fun yet? We get together basically to discuss issues relating to um, points of dissatisfaction, if you like. I'm 95 years old, I enjoy life still, and but it's such a letdown to feel that you're in this place where everybody is out to skim that little bit more from you. And it's all about money. All about making the most of it. OK, you're old. We'll get what we can out of you before you finally pass on. Uh, somebody had referred to us as the poor old dears. So we now call ourselves the POGs, as in P-O-D. And we all share very similar views about the situation in our village. I do know about it. These are residents from Veronica Gardens, a retirement village run by a company called Aveo. When you're here at Avea, you're not just buying the property. Look, ultimately there are a number of services here that we provide that the residents can enjoy. That being from local transport to the emergency call systems we have in place, the staff on site, knowing that if you have got an issue, there is someone on the other end of the line to be able to help you. According to the promotional materials, it describes Veronica Gardens as an enclave of contentedness. How would you describe it? I don't think contentedness would be the word. We're not two-year-olds, and we don't like being patted on the head and being treated like little kids, because we're not. We are people who've worked and achieved, and we deserve to be treated with greater respect than we are. It's, it's quite sickening and, and quite terrifying. And you, and you think, well... What am I paying these fees for? What am I getting? So something was promised to me and, and now it's not there. And there is this awful sense of betrayal. John Hato has been living at Veronica Gardens Retirement Village in inner city Melbourne since 1997. On November 13 last year, he had a fall. 5am in the morning, I went to the toilet and came out of the toilet, did a right turn to go back to the bedroom and my walker went over and I went over with it. And 
When I went down, I stayed down. Like all residents, John Hato had been given an emergency pendant, but it was out of reach next to his bed. Part of me being there was partly my fault because I didn't have the pendant around my neck and I um, didn't have my mobile phone. I uh, tried to get help singing out and making noises and all that sort of thing and to no avail and um, that was a Sunday Sunday passed. On a, a, a Monday, uh, the boys come round and pick up the garbage cans and I tried to yell out to them, you know, come and get me sort of thing. And, uh, but half them wear earphones and <laughs> they're, they're another world, not, you know, my world. After a couple of days, a friend who was unable to contact John became worried and says he called the front office. He called the front office, yeah. And he said he's concerned about my well-being. Could they contact me and see I was well and give them... And he left his phone number with them and they said they're ringing him back. It never happened. The fact is that they were communicated to and they didn't carry out what they should have done, is to come down and check me out physically. Tuesday passed, Wednesday passed. And my next door neighbour, she came to the door on several occasions. Get out, John. Open up. Are you in there? But she was unfortunately very deaf. <laughs> I tried to get a bottle of whiskey out of the cupboard with my pickup stick. And I thought, if I'm going, I'd go out happy. <laughs> and, um, but I wasn't successful at that. Finally, on day five, his cleaner found him. Yeah, John? How often does your cleaner come? Only once a fortnight. So I was lucky that fortnight was on my schedule. What would have happened if your cleaner hadn't come? Well, I'd be a dead duck, wouldn't I? <laughs> John has now been in hospital for seven months recovering. Since I had the fall, I got the leg and uh, out of breath, so forth. <coughs> My health has deteriorated quite considerably, yeah. <coughs> Aveo says it has no record of the incident, but the pods are still shocked by what happened to John Hato. It was just terrifying. That's the only way I can put it, really. It's not what you would call adequate care. John used to go spinning my, past my place on his um, go-kart, you know. Mm. Yes. Poor man. And to think that someone has called and they haven't even bothered to go and check to see how that person is and you just think, what happens if that's me? And they yeah. haven't even offered him an apology but for not going oh. down. Do you feel that Aveo has breached your trust? I personally lost faith in this company and uh, nothing else would... Um, uh, to me, there's no substance there. It's all um, money, money, money. Veronica Gardens is owned and operated by Aveo, one of the biggest listed retirement village companies in Australia. Aveo's major shareholder is Mulfa, a Malaysian company controlled by the Lee family, which owns almost a quarter of the retirement village juggernaut. The chairman of both companies is billionaire Seng Wang Lee, the 42-year-old Malaysian who has deep roots in Australia and a passion for sailing. In 2016, his boat crossed the line in third place in the Sydney to Hobart boat race. Uh, I think it's the first time we've got the, the whole crew together, um, and so it's just really seeing the whole crew get, uh, work together. 
Lee took control of key family interests just before his father was sent to jail in Hong Kong in 2004 for corporate fraud, after he was found guilty of inflating the true value of a company. Lee joined the Aveo board in 2006. The company now runs villages that house 13,000 retirees across the country and it's building a massive $1 billion complex in southeast Queensland, boasting 2,500 dwellings. Last year, Aveo doubled profit to $116 million. The business model to me is a get poor quick scheme for the individual investor in a property in a retirement village, and it's a get rich quick scheme for the operator of the retirement village. It's totally rapacious. Uh, I don't know how they get away with it. I don't know why anybody would enter into such a contract because it's, it's clearly um, designed to suck as much profit from the individ individual investor as possibly can. John Lander is a retired diplomat. He was Australia's first ambassador to Iran. In October 2014, he purchased this unit at Veronica Gardens for $410,000. I made it very clear when I bought that I was keen to buy a freehold property which was nearby to where I was teaching. And I sent, as I have always done with all property purchases, sent all the documents to my solicitor. He checked the purchase contract, but he did not go through the service agreement in detail. The document, is that thick. It was only after he moved in and heard other residents complaining that he read his agreement more closely. The surface agreement explicitly states that I may not allow anybody else to live in my unit, I may not rent it out, I may not take a mortgage over it, um, I may not sell it to uh, any prospective buyer but only to buyers who meet the criteria laid down in the service agreement. The restrictions on... After two years, John decided to sell. But because the contract was so restrictive, he says the only buyer was Aveo, and he had to pay a punitive exit fee to the company. The exit fee is a percentage of the purchase price kept by Aveo every time a unit is sold. This fee is unique to the retirement village industry. I think it's outrageous, I think it's extortionate, uh, I think it's exploitative. The process of getting out means that uh, for two years I paid $78,000 for the, for the privilege. That was the, my loss on my investment after two years. Mum virtually signed her life away. 135000 We saw what she had signed. I thought it was wrong that these people could sign an elderly person up. Come on, I'm going to go. Gary Landell's mother, Ruth Shepherd, lived at Veronica Gardens for four and a half years. In 2015, she moved out after being diagnosed with dementia. What I didn't like in the letter that Gary was given power of attorney and read the contract she'd signed with Aveo. It makes me mad. That they can sign elderly people up and you've basically got no comeback. As in when mum when I mum got dementia and I had to get her out of the place and I took her up to where I live. And then put, I said, OK, we'll sell the unit. And then I found out that they've got the right to hold the unit, not, they've got the right not to sell the unit for 12 months. As the unit stood empty, waiting to be sold, Gary's mother was charged hefty monthly maintenance fees. I was charged 2,000 a month as a maintenance fee on the unit. What? Maintenance, I don't know. I cleaned it from top to bottom, inside out, upside down before I left. It was spotless, so I can't see what a maintenance fee was. So how can they charge you a $2,000 a month maintenance fee? 
for doing nothing. I want to get on board. I want to get in there. I want to get a job where I can get 2000 a month for doing nothing. 33% as an exit fee. Feeling that his mother was bleeding money, it's Gary finally offloaded the unit. Who ultimately bought the property? They did, a BO. They bought it. After all costs were out. After deducting exit fees and a series of other charges, Aveo finally sent Gary's mother a cheque for just over $48,000. We paid $135,000 for the unit and then in October 2015, we cleared $48,000. That's what you got back? Yeah. That's it. If you want to take them to court, it's, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg and we're not in a position to do that. We're just average people. All up, buying into this retirement village for four and a half years cost Gary's mother more than $190,000. If she'd spent that amount renting, she could have spent those four and a half years living in this apartment complex in Turak and still have money left over to buy this new car. And I bet you there's heaps in this company, Avio and that, that are going around on the best of everything and getting the best of wages and everything else. But the elderly are going to suffer. It's, it's the elderly, to me, that are suffering because I, don't, I, I feel that there must be a lot of families like me. Company documents suggest that a key part of the business model is churn, or turnover, as Aveo describes it in its presentations. The target is to vacate and resell between 10 to 12 per cent of homes every year, which is equivalent to more than 1,200 units. I think there's a real incentive in this business model to churn residents through. The retirement village operator makes its money when the person leaves the, pr the premises. So they've got an incentive uh, to get people through and, and get that payday when the person dies or exits the, the, the village. Every time somebody leaves, they get to access that profit again. So it's an extraordinary source of revenue for them and it's a fantastic model for profiteering. Hi Adele, welcome in. Jeff Richards moved into Veronica Gardens in December 2010 with his de facto partner of 55 years, Harry Nash, and their dog, Tosh. Ah, so this is Harry. Yes, Adele. At that stage, Harry was uh, suffering from cancer in the throat and he felt we ought to take things a bit easier. So his instruction to me was find us a retirement village. And that's what I did. So, Adele, Harry passed away in May 2014. Four years after moving into the village, Harry died. And by October the 5th, 2015... He left his entire estate to Jeff, including their Veronica Gardens unit. But Jeff's name wasn't on the title, and he says he was told by management he had to sell the property and leave. So your occupancy has no standing... It wasn't very long before the then sales manager uh, wrote and pointed out that I had no tenancy in the, the unit, despite the fact that Harry and I had been partners in business, private and personally, over 55 years. That was ignored completely because his was the only name on the agreement. How did that make you feel? Extremely annoyed, Adele. Jeff offered to sell the place and then buy it back from Aveo. But you inherited the unit. Why did you have to buy it from Aveo? The service agreement, unbeknownst when we signed, <clears throat> the service agreement specified that anyone inheriting, this is in the fine print, uh, inherits the proceeds from the estate that they cannot... Uh, take a right to occupy. So you offered to buy the place you already owned? Tried to buy it. And they refused? And they refused. Jeff was ultimately forced to move out. I'm now up here in a separate unit, wonderful location. Instead of uh, 
6000 a year in uh, body corporate fees. I pay here 1300 get the same benefits, except for an alarm system, which didn't work anyway. You're the person that owns it, and you're the person who's paying for it. Stuart Levitt, who acted for Jeff, says there are numerous clauses that allow Aveo to evict residents. Vacating the unit for more than two months without permission, going overseas for any length of time without permission, putting a tenant in there or allowing somebody to stay with you. I think that the whole matter, the whole way in which old people are being exploited in this way, one of the most vulnerable sectors of the community, uh, and left it, it the, at their lowest ebb when they can least recover, is totally unconscionable. Monica Johnson and her husband Ron are residents at the Aveo Mountain View Retirement Village in Mowillumbah. Monica has a pre-existing lung condition and after she moved in, the dampness made it worse. The mould was under the guttering and the eaves, right around the building. Uh, the worst, very worst part was outside the bathroom. That was just black. Can't go out all the time because I'm so tired. It's rough, really rough. So this is... The letter from your doctor? Yeah, that was the first letter. After a series of tests, Monica's doctor told her the damp and mould were affecting her health. In a letter, he says he remains deeply concerned about the effects of the environment in her unit on her respiratory status and general health, including the impact on her mental health. Monica says she repeatedly asked Aveo for help. Many times and asked them could they do something about, about it. Uh, took a while to get them to do it, something like four years, but they eventually did uh, when my doctor started writing letters to them and telling them that he was very disappointed in the way they were looking after me. So this here, as I explained at consultation, I remain deeply concerned about the effects of the environment in yes. your unit. Monica and Ron asked Aveo to buy them out. What the payout would be. We can't move out if we take what they say they'll pay us. They first offered us $95,000. We paid 136000 for the unit. So the entry fee? Aveo later offered them $159,000. But out of that, Aveo would deduct exit fees and $60,000 for refurbishment and reinstatement of the unit. $60,000 sounds like a heck of a lot of money. Well, for a little place like this, you know, and I mean, I haven't been kicking the wall in or anything and making a mess of it. It's, we've painted it three times, we've put new carpet down. Why would they want that much money? Greed. Yeah. Greed at its very worst. So you're trapped? Trapped like a rat. And they take 100% that's against the law. If they took the offer, Monica and Ron would be left with just $52,000 from the sale. Not enough to buy elsewhere. I mean, you can't go out on the street and busk and raise money that way. Um, and we're not from a rich family. Um, oh, I don't know. Sometimes you wonder why you did it, or you do. You question yourself all the time. And the solicitor said that to me, that um, everybody that comes in from AVO says the same thing. I don't know how I got caught up in this. What's for tea? Soup. Monica and Ron are stuck there. Not fattening. Uh, some of the people who've moved out say it's like getting out of prison. That's a common thing to say. But um, you're fighting the depression all the time. That's the worst thing. And um, Ron gets very depressed.
The prize for the most disturbing Aveo story must go to Gwyneth Jones. I want AVO brought to their knees for the harm, damage, injury, hurt and trauma they have caused me over a period of 14 years. Gwyneth Jones had a varied career as a criminologist, school teacher and champion athlete before buying a unit at Aveo's The George Retirement Village in Sandringham in 2005. From day one, this forthright woman locked horns with Aveo management. Retirees are supposed to be uh, easily manipulated, uh, easy, conform, um, obedient, non-complaining, compliant, all those sort of things. And I wasn't any of those, and they felt threatened by me because I didn't fit their stereotype image of a typical retiree. I have to pay extra. Gwyneth felt gouged at every turn. Heat lamp. Ten dollars. Uh, Ten dollars. The maintenance man came in and installed a new heat lamp. That cost fifteen dollars. If you want to try because you're sick, you, ha you have to pay $4.50, so it's not wise to get sick because you'll get charged for it. Right, and extra cappuccinos. Any, anything like anything they bring to your room, necessary or unnecessary, $10. I got charged $10 because I locked my key in the room on a couple of occasions and I had to ask a staff member, would you please... Uh, unlock my door, I've accidentally left my key in my room. That'll cost you $10. So it's all documented on the monthly bill. $10 for this, $10 for that. Uh, $5 for a cup of Milo? $5 for a cup of Milo, yes. I was charged $10 for a Band-Aid to be put on my wrist by a manager who didn't know where the first aid kit was and there was no staff around to help her. How about light bulbs? $10. If you ask the uh, the handyman to come put a light bulb, it costs you ten dollars. If he stays more than fifteen minutes, it goes up to twenty dollars. You're the only you. one I've got in my life that's helping me. Gwyneth had repeated run-ins with management and some residents. In two thousand and nine, Gwyneth met a disability advocate, Alan Conn. And who was the other one? Because I deal in disability service auditing, I noticed that how Gwyneth was being treated by the village management and staff that she wasn't fairly treated. Uh, she mentioned to me that uh, she believes she is going to be evicted, so I assist, she asked me to assist her in that in that area. On June twenty three, two thousand and nine. Aveo claimed her behaviour was out of control. She was admitted to a psych ward at Monash Health for three weeks. Gwyneth was diagnosed with dementia based on an assessment by a psychiatrist at the hospital. The reason they had me forcibly admitted to the Viola unit was to punish me, was to shut me up, was to silence me with drugs. Alan disputes the diagnosis of dementia. Well, I definitely didn't agree that she has dementia. I'm not a clinician, but um, it was basically proven that she doesn't have dementia. Gwyneth Jones obtained hundreds of documents released through freedom of information into her medical history, which confirms a deliberate plan to evict her. One document, written three weeks before Gwyneth was told what was going on, says the eviction process is to be started. Another document reveals the eviction process will take up to 90 days. And if that failed, they had a plan B. Were you shocked when you read those documents? Horrified. I, I burst into tears. And I went through them the other day, just a couple of days ago, and I went to pieces when I read again what they had written about me. What, what were some of the things that they... What, have you got a list of things that they alleged against you? Yes, that Gwyneth stood naked in front of her window so that she could be viewed from the street by the children walking to and fro from school. 
Gwyneth urinated all over the lounge room furniture in our common room. Gwyneth left faeces right along the hallway along to her unit. Gwyneth stole the key from the office so she could op open everybody's unit. Was it true? Of course not. All lies. All lies. It's all lies. Alan Conn arranged two separate psychiatric assessments, both suggesting she does not have dementia. One psychiatrist wrote, I do not find the neuropsychology assessment particularly convincing. He gave her a perfect score of 30 out of 30 for cognitive testing. I believe that uh, they were trying to evict her to receive that exit fee and to, to move her on. In other words, to churn her. That's correct. This is a report I wrote... Aveo denies this assertion and says it was acting in the best interests of Gwyneth, other residents and staff. With Alan's help, Gwyneth thwarted Aveo's eviction plans. The hospital ultimately apologised to Gwyneth for the distress and upset which they caused her and authorised an excratia payment. It's like living in a grubby fairy tale, and I still am. How has it changed you? Has it changed it, you? It has damaged my psyche. I have become a person I no longer like. I don't like myself. I have changed. I'm full of anger and bitterness. Why do you stay? I haven't got enough money to go anywhere else. If I was to sell my unit, the only money I'd have would be to buy a tent. Or a car. That's all, all the money it had. Where would I go? Aveo has helped Seng Wang Li and his family amass a fortune. The family has a stake in Hong Kong's largest investment bank and interests in numerous hotels, including the Sydney Intercontinental, Sanctuary Cove, and an ultra luxury resort on Hayman Island. Other assets include the London Marriott and, in Paris, the Sofitel. There are the retirement villages where business is quite simply booming. And now they've found another way to make money, running not just retirement villages, but also aged care centres. We're in the midst of an ageing crisis. In the whole country, there are only 85 aged care beds for every thousand Australians aged over 80. There has to be a better way, a genuinely affordable way that delivers every level of care, including dementia and palliative, within a loving community. Fortunately, now there is a way. If you are looking for a quiet... Aveo's latest game plan is to tap into the home aged care market, a separate market to retirement villages. A new arm of Aveo, called Freedom Aged Care, will enable the company to tap into $4.6 billion of annual government funding following deregulation of the sector. Some residents are feeling pressured to shift to the new Freedom Aged Care contracts, which are all leasehold, and have even higher exit fees. How do you feel about retirement villages being converted to aged care? I would personally feel insulted. I have not moved into an aged care facility. I'm 80 in a couple of weeks. I am fiercely independent, and I intend to maintain my independence as long as I possibly can. I'm still young. I hope not to have to go into aged care for another 20 or 30 years. I didn't buy there for aged for AVO to turn it into aged care and boss me round. And, and, and I am terribly suspicious about what's happening. Already, 25 Aveo retirement villages are being partly converted into freedom aged care centres. For many residents at many villages, this seems to be the final straw, the final insult. I think, OK, it's a retirement village. And I think respect, they should respect us. We're not all stupid. I believe that I am 
entitled to some respect from the people whose wages I am paying. Aveo residents Shirley Kudavita and Margaret Lee cannot believe the retirement villages are being converted into aged care centres against the wishes of residents. I don't believe that they should tell me that I have to have aged care. I will know when I'm ready for aged care. I'm not intending to have aged care enforced on me when I live. Um, I need a choice and that's my freedom of choice, not AVO's freedom. Look, it's hard to escape the conclusion that it is a bit of a money-grabbing exercise uh, with, with deregulation in that industry. Um, we're likely to see more private providers enter it, wanting more of the cash pie, if you like. So from this, you can see... Freedom Age care contracts have many new services and fees. Exit fees reach a new high of 40% after just two years. And at point of sale, Aveo demands half of any capital gain, while the resident must wear all of the loss. Aveo says its new contracts are simpler and give residents more certainty. My reading of some of the terms in these contracts is that they aren't compliant with unfair contract terms. If the property depreciates, you wear the loss entirely. That's unfair in my view. The exit fee is the real killer when it comes to these contracts. It's, you know, particularly a 40% uh, charge of the outgoing value at exit time is just uh, eye-watering. It's, um, uh, you know, it's downright exploitation. And it does, it does seem unfair, really. I show industry expert Jared Brody what Aveo has offered one resident for her unit, compared with the amount Aveo would on-sell it for under a Freedom Age care contract. As you can see, they're valuing it at $240,000, and that's freehold. If you have a look at the same village, selling a one-bedroom apartment for a loan lease. Look at the prices. It's, it's six hundred to $700,000. I mean, that's outright robbery. That's amazing, isn't it? Not only is Aveo trying to buy the apartment for less than half the price at which they'll be selling it, the new price is only for leasehold, not the freehold the resident currently owns. It would be distributed from there. Residents like the pods have had enough. They want to see meaningful change. They feel they've been let down by politicians and regulators for far too long. It's a very, very unfair playing field at the moment. It's completely biased in favour of the operators. You feel you haven't got a, a chance to defend your home against the rapacity of the, of the huge corporation. You will always win because they can afford the legal costs involved. We're trying to lobby the government to change things, including the Act, and trying to get an ombudsman who can make decisions about what happens when the law is broken in regard to retirement villages, because consumer affairs doesn't do anything. It doesn't enforce anything. Nobody ever gets punished. The regulatory framework is a mess. There is different legislation in every state. For too long, retirement living has been put in the too hard basket by various regulators and politicians and, and policy makers. Um, at the federal level, uh, they say it's the responsibility of state governments and state regulators. Um, at the state level, there's often not the resources or will to, to really tackle the industry, which has become a, a huge profitable industry. Uh, and that means that, you know, uh, consumer protection can fall through the cracks. And it is. Absolutely. We need to be protective of people that need our protection. Many of them are war veterans, many of them are people that have, have worked all their lives and paid taxes all their lives. Though they may now be old and frail, Let's not forget that it is they who built our nation with hands of hope and fought for our freedom with hearts of courage. And though they may now need our care, it's not care that defines them, but love, togetherness, freedom and choice.
Surveys by Aveo claim 89% of residents feel safe and secure. It's not care that but behind the loving and caring public face of Aveo lies a ruthless money-making machine that's making the lives of some Australians a misery. And this is why we created Freedom Age Care. Because we owe them. Give me freedom, give me freedom, give me freedom. I don't believe that people of my age should be treated in this manner, uh, all for money. I'd say it's a company that puts profits before people. The motto of AVO and other retirement village industries, but particularly AVO, is to bleed them dry till they die. Even if they take every penny off you, they'll do it. And if that's the AVO way, God help us. Representatives of Aveo were invited to take part in this program. They declined. You'll find responses from the company on our website. See you next week. Good night. <laughs>